Thank you for keeping track of me, making sure I do what I need to be doing, okay? But uh, think about it. Attitude affects every area of life. I get repeat. Attitude affects every area of life. Our attitude towards school or work determines in how well we do or in what we accomplish. If our attitude isn't very good, we don't do much, we can't accomplish much. If our attitude is good, um, then we can achieve something of, uh, of value. Uh, I'm going to tell a story on myself. Uh, some of you know that I love Dave Great. I spent two years in it. <laughs> and uh, I, we, I went to a junior high school down in Florida that I did not like the school. Uh, it was an older place. I did not like the teachers, and I'm sorry. I, wasn't, I didn't speak Southern accent yet, and I had no idea uh, you know, what this teacher was to saying, this English teacher, and I loved English. Anyways, I had developed a really bad attitude. It was so bad, I even flunked band. <laughs> and how do you flunk band? I just didn't turn in any practice sheets. Okay. So I had an attitude problem, and like I said, uh, that was probably one of the best things that happened to me. Because, uh, one, my parents moved from the south side of town to the north side into a newer area. And we had a new school that was, uh, I had to take the bus to get there, but it was a newer junior high school. I liked the teachers, and so I went from an F plus average to a B plus average. My attitude changed, and I decided I didn't want to do that again. I, I, one time would have been enough <laughs> uh, getting through school. So you know what I'm saying. I mean, let me even look at our marriages our attitudes do affect the quality of our marriages. You know, if somebody walks around bitter, grumpy, and grouchy all the time, uh, that, that, does, that does not help a marriage. And you know, uh, you know, our attitude towards the church and his, and you know, or towards Christ and his church also uh, uh, affects us. Okay, when it comes, uh, let's, so let's say worship is something that we either look forward to. Uh, attending or we just come because we have to come it's habit you see the attitude you, you know if we if I, we're coming expecting we're joyful we're going to get something out of the worship service otherwise it becomes hat or if it's just out of habit I uh, just because I need to go uh, we may not get anything out of it so attitude affects everything and so your attitude can either draw people to Christ or drive them away from Christ. Or because our attitude towards others can drive them away. It, our attitudes are so important. If you've got a good attitude, even when you're sick and in pain or things are going on, and you got a, you have a better chance of getting better than someone who very, has a very negative attitude. And many of you know what I'm talking about. Well, last week I shared how Paul encouraged the church to protect its unity by humbling its, uh, themselves and being concerned for others to meet their own uh, and to meet their needs, uh, you know, of those in need. And so, you know, so in second, no, I'll try this again, Philippians 2, verses 5 to 11, Paul uses Christ as our example. He says, have this attitude in yourselves. It was also in Christ Jesus. So I want to look at that passage. And there are two different ways I was looking at it and looking at going to both ways. And I decided to go in this direction to continue last week's. But, he, uh, but Paul wrote, have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself. And taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. A powerful passage of scripture. But I like what he says. 
have this attitude in yourselves that was also in Christ Jesus. See, where did it, so I want to look at four characteristics of, of the attitude we should have that Jesus displayed. And the first one is that we're to think of others above our own desires. We're to think of others above our own desires. In verses six and seven, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. Jesus willingly gave up all the glories of heaven for man's salvation. And I can't understand it. I don't know how he could do that. Why he could do that, other than that he loves us. Loves us with a love that's beyond our comprehension. Because in this passage, and with the others that I shared with, uh, with the girls and Elsa, I put on the bulletin, Jesus is God. He is God made flesh. You know, he, he, the, the, you know, the form in here, it, it refers to the outward expression of an inward reality. I mean, he, uh, you know, he, pre, he pre-existed in his divine form of God, equal to God the Father in every way. And yet by his very nature and innate being, Jesus is he is always has been and always will be fully divine. He is God. Remember when uh, uh, he was having some issues with the Pharisees and and they wanted to know well who, uh, who he is and you said oh are you older than Abraham and you know you know Abraham and he, he said before Abraham was I am. I am is what God revealed himself to Moses. Jesus is declaring, I am. I am the eternal one. I am past. And, that, and then they picked up stones to throw at him. He got away. But, you know, his very nature and innate being, Jesus is, has always been and will forever be fully, will forever be fully divine. See, as God, Jesus didn't need anything. He had all the glory and the praise of the universe. He reigned over it all. He did not consider equality with God a thing to be held on to selfishly. He saw, our, he saw mankind's plight. He saw our helplessness. He saw our hopelessness. And he came in our behalf willing to suffer the most horrible death uh, that they had around in order to provide the salvation, forgiveness of sin, to provide uh, forgiveness, well, I've already said forgiveness, uh, eternal life. And not only that, he, as a result, they were made God's children, uh, joint heirs with Jesus, on we could go. And that's mind boggling. But he did that. He humbled himself. He, he saw the need. He thought of the, our needs above his own desires and made that sacrifice for us. See, Christians, we're to have an, un, a self, we're to have an unselfish concern for others. Basically, we're all selfish. We are. I mean, I get hungry and I'm waiting and waiting and and so I get irritable, right? <laughs> it's a sugar level dropping. <laughs> I'll blame it on that, okay? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah when we want our, you know, we like our comfort. We don't want pain. We don't, you know, that's the way we are. And, uh, you know, we take care of ourselves. And uh, so, but, in, in the, but there's no room for selfishness in the Christian's life because all we have has been given to us by Jesus. And because of his love for us, we don't deserve any of the good things he's given us. See, like Jesus, we should be willing to give up our comfort and our blessings to be able to share Jesus' love with others. We've known so many different missionaries. Uh, when we went to Spain, and uh, you know th that was a good experience for us. But some of our friends, other missionaries, they went to Africa, to other places. You know, when someone, a couple got caught in Rwanda when they had that uh, genocide 
and they just got out. They just uh, they escaped. Uh, well, just so many thousands of people were being killed. So their people are giving up their blessings and their nice, comfortable homes in order to go to share Christ all over the world. We have missionaries everywhere sharing the good news of Jesus, and their people end up being killed or being thrown into prison, or, or they're just in very primitive circumstances. So like Christ, we should be willing to give up our comfort and blessings to share the love of Christ with others. And we don't have to go all around, the, all over the world. You know, we got neighbors, we got, there are different ministries to be involved in. See, we're not, you know, Jesus, we need to humble ourselves. We should never see ourselves as better or more important than other people. You know, we're who the people Jesus hung around with. He hung around with the sinners. You know, he didn't become a sinner. He, he, he changed the lives of sinners so that they became children of God. We should never see ourselves better or more important than others because we've all sinned. We're all weak. We're all, we have all failed. And we all come to Christ the same way as through faith, acknowledging our sins and repenting of them. I mean, if somebody came in, we had an issue once back at uh, our church in Northern Maine. Uh, one of the guys, one of our deacons, leaders in the church said, well, if some queer came on into the church, I uh, you know, came into the church, I'd go down and just escort him right back out the door. Is that the attitude we're supposed to have? They need Jesus. What I didn't say, uh, and he said that in a Sunday school class, and I wasn't in there, but there was a guy who was. His name, well, his, you know, one guy, his name is Romeo. And his <laughs> brother, his brother uh, ended up in the homosexual scene, came back to Caribou to die. He had AIDS. And that's before all this other stuff. Well, he needed transportation to Presque Isle, uh, 11 miles south, uh, to see the doctor. I gave him rides, took him out to eat, and I led him to faith in Jesus. And he heard that, and he never came back to our church. But fortunately, his social worker was a, a devout member and loved Jesus from another church down in Presque Isle, and he started going there. He needed Jesus. He needed eternal life. We all do. See, humility is the action of turning our eyes away from ourselves, focusing on God and the needs of others around us. So, you know, we're to think of others above our own desires, but we're also to serve others in verse 7. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a bond servant. And that's a, like a, almost like a, that's like a slave that chooses to be bound uh, willingly. And uh, so, you know, he became a servant. He came as a servant. He emptied himself because equality with God was not something to be selfishly held onto. He emptied himself of certain divine rights, such as the worship of the saints and the angels in heaven, all of heaven's riches and glory. He didn't empty himself of his deity. He just, you know, he had a sinless physical body with all the, uh, all the attributes of, of humanity. He was a human, but he was still God. He was 100% human, 100% God, which is again, beyond our comprehension of how does he do that? But he had all of this, he, he humbled himself he used that body to be a servant. He gave the example, even when he washed his disciples' feet. He was teaching them a lesson. Because usually that's usually the, the job of the servant or the slave in the home. And you come, uh, the slave would do that. You know, would uh, serve in that way. He didn't pretend to be a servant. He was actually a servant in the fullest sense. He came to give aid to all kinds of people, to fishermen, harlots, tax collectors, the sick, the sorry, the sinners, all people who had needs. And guess what? That's all of us. All of us have needs. And he's come for all of us. And so Christians are servants of God. How do we serve God? By serving others. See, we can talk about love. We can talk about the things that should be done. But we should be willing to put our talk into action. 
You know, as Jesus stooped down to, from heaven to earth for us, we should be willing to undertake some lowly, self-forgetful task in the service of others. We need to be ministering to other people. And we're to be, uh, and then we continue on in verse 8, where he says, Being found in appearance as man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient even to the point of death, even death on a cross. You know, we're to, we're to set, make sacrifices, we're to sacrifice ourselves for others. Oh, now that getting kind of touchy here. Really, uh, okay, I, I don't really want to go to a cross. <laughs> I don't want to be crucified. You know, I don't want to suffer uh, bad things. None of us do. But sometimes we, we miss the idea of what a sacrifice is. We think sacrifice is giving up something that is you know, important to us or dear to us. Well, a sacrifice is really a gift. It's a gift. We give a gift to God. And I'll get into that in a minute. But see, Jesus willingly gave up everything for us. So in obedience to the will of the Father, he took that body to the cross. He died to provide forgiveness of our sin. He gave himself to us. That's where the sacrifice is. He suffered on our behalf. He willingly, he willingly suffered for our sins. Uh, because crucifixion was probably one of the most cruel ways of execution because it took about, usually about three days for someone to die. They can't breathe. They, they can't get up. And they, they suffocate. There's a lot of pain. Plus the humiliation of being stripped down naked up on that cross. And then he was beaten with, those, uh, with the, the whips of the 50 lashes. And so his back and everything was all shredded. And he did that. He had, he had to suffer pain because, you know, he had to keep us out of hell. He willingly gave himself to us in love, knowing that there was nothing we could do to satisfy God's justice. None of us are good enough. No one's righteous is enough. So he took our sins upon himself and sacrificed himself. So as Christians, we must be made willing to sacrifice in order to serve. Listen to Romans 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Like I said, sacrifice is a gift given to God. God gave, Jesus gave himself to us for our benefit, and as his followers, we give ourselves to God. We give ourselves to God, saying, God, use me any way that you want, whatever you want to do. That is the sacrifice. It's a gift. And uh, see, in, in the Old Testament sacrifices, a lot of the sacrifices, they bring, you know, the, they bring lamb or whatever. Well, they got, a, they got a portion of it back, and the priest got a portion of it. They had the Thanksgiving sacrifices where they, uh, some of the veggies and other things, they would offer sacrifice and they would eat. The priest got some, the people got some. Uh, the Day of Atonement, now everything was totally burnt. Everything was totally burnt. And, that, uh, and then, of course, then the, uh, the, the uh, okay, I'm trying to remember which, which animal was taken out into the wilderness. But, yeah, but those were the ultimate sacrifices. Jesus gave the ultimate sacrifice, but we are to, we're to have a submissive mind to whatever God wants. And I'm going to give you an example of a, a good friend of mine. His name's Danny. He's always doing something for somebody. He's two years older than I am. And uh, I mean, he's working himself to death, but you know, there's a lady... Uh, whose daughter is uh, he got some kind of disease. She's just all crippled up. And his, so he goes and he cuts the grass. He, he takes care of the horses. He does he does this all over. Somebody needs uh, some plumbing work. He, 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 all kinds of work. He's always on the go. And why? He doesn't get paid for it. He's doing it because there's a need. He sees the need. So he gives himself to the, to, to the service of God by ministering to the needs of others. So we should live for the glory of God and the good of others. Our service is to honor God. 
and to plan for the good of, you know, no matter how costly, we should be able to minister to people. When Hurricane Mitch hit Nicaragua many years ago, I went with a group down there to build houses. We gave of our time, we gave of our money to go ahead and help people who lost everything. And we did it through the church. So therefore, God was getting the glory. You see what I'm saying? When we, love is the motive, sacrifice is never men measured or mentioned. Because sacrifice is our gift of ourselves to God. And God has his plan for us and we serve God by serving him, by serving others. That's what Jesus did. And we're to glory, and we're to bring glory to God through our service. We're to bring glory to God through our service because of that Jesus humbled himself by becoming obedient even to the point of the cross. He glorified God. And believe it or not, you and I are that glory. He is glorified through our lives, our, us giving ourselves to Jesus. We're the ones that bring glory to God through Jesus' death. And we come before him in praise and adoration. And, and, uh, and we know that every tongue will confess Jesus is Lord of the glory of God the Father when, when he returns. See, Jesus revealed God to us. His words were what God wanted us to hear. Uh, you know, his, his teachings directed us to God, pointed us to God. His death demonstrated God's love for us. And then his resurrection and exaltation de de demonstrates the power and the glory of God, the power of God. And he's, a, he's glorified above all creation. And we're part of that. See, all we do should do should bring glory to God. He says in Matthew 5, 16, which I quoted a number of times, let your light shine in such a way, before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your fathers in heaven. See, what we do brings glory to God or, well, I want to say keep positive. Have that positive attitude. See, the goal of all we should do is to glorify God out of thanksgiving, out of praise, out of love because of all that he's done for us. And as Jesus revealed the, Jesus to the world, we reveal through our works, we reveal God to the, to the people around us. We, we reveal Jesus and his love. And when we serve others, we become God's hands and his feet. We become his vessels of, of ministering to people. And when people give their lives to Christ and they're changed and because of our service, God is glorified. That's one of the reasons I think God, now for one of us, just give praise for what God has been doing and how God brought people together that we had an influence on here, influence on here, and now they're all together. By just inviting somebody to church, you never know what kind of impact we have. And then we will be honored for our sacrifice and service. Uh, Peter wrote in 1 Peter 5, 6, Humble yourselves therefore unto the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you at the proper time. And if we humble ourselves unto the hand of God, he will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And to me, that's going to be the greatest honor and blessing we can experience. See, Jesus gave himself completely to us to bring salvation, forgiveness of sin, and salvation, eternal life to all who would believe in him. And when we give our lives to him, he comes in, he changes us. Holy Spirit comes in, or make, gives us that new birth, makes his home within. And he gave us an example of how the attitude we should have as his people. And if we can keep that attitude of, that I just shared of being able to serve God because we want to, it becomes an exciting joy. And God uses his people when we want to, when we apply these attitudes into our own lives. We should often ask, do people see Jesus in me? Is God glorified through my life? Powerful questions. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you so much for the salvation you provided. I thank you so much for your love, your mercy, your grace. 
though we don't understand it all and, and probably never will, I thank you that we can experience it and that we know that uh, you are God and that you are our Lord, you are our Savior, we are your children, we are joint heirs with Jesus, and all we can do is say thank you, thank you, thank you. And I pray that you will use us as we serve you out of gratitude, out of love, not to gain points, but just because we love you. So I pray that as we go throughout this week, that you will do some great and wonderful things in our lives. And Father, if there is someone who's here who has not experienced you, has not opened his or her heart to you, I pray that uh, that person will do that yeah, today. We thank you again for your presence with us. Continue to work on our hearts and our, our hearts and our minds to make us more and more like Jesus every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. We're going to stand and sing uh, number 293. The song is Take Time to Be Holy. And as we do spend time with him through prayer and his word, we become more holy. And God uses us in even greater ways. So let's stand, please, as we sing number 293, Take Time to Be 